Okay, welcome to CTT number 103. Woo! And tonight, and, and <laughs> is a dot dot dot, it's an ellipsis, and it's our number two of our design connection collaboration, which is the new name for the old Mega Meetup. So it's part of our Mega Meetup series, and we'll talk more about that in a sec. Uh, so we're really lucky to have Dan taking photos, that's why he's here. He's come all the way from Hong Kong to take some photos of you, which is pretty awesome. So we're going to hear from Dan on Culture Ops real soon. But to get started, I want a clicker that clicks. There we go. Just want to acknowledge that we're on Gadigal country and pay my respects to elders past, present and future. So, where's Kate? A huge thanks to our sponsors, and somewhere, at some point, Kate will re-emerge and tell us all about ThoughtWorks. So hopefully you know you're in ThoughtWorks' place right now. And when Kate re-emerges, I'll get her to share, coming out of the lift, exactly what ThoughtWorks does. In the meantime, let's kick over to Deanna and Alan to tell us about Shapeshifters. Um, I'm Diana, this is Alan. We're Shapeshifters, we're a visual communication design agency uh, in Sydney. We work with teams to help them align and communicate more effectively. And we also do training so that we can help people think more visually and solve problems visually. Um, and we have a meetup as well, a little meetup uh, called Think Visual. It happens every second Wednesday of the month in the morning. So just before work, if you want a little creative inspiration, uh, come to our meetup. The next one is, I think, going to be at KPMG um, on the 13th of October. And I think so. Yeah, and the speaker is from Ospay Plus. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to highlight um, a very special thing that we do over here at uh, Sydney Design Thinking. We have uh, Pradeep Galur over here, a friend of ours. Woo! Woo! Pradeep is going to uh, live scribe this event. Now, for those of you who don't know what that means, uh, Pradeep is actually going to listen to the conversation or listen to what's being said, and in real time, he's going to visually synthesize what's going on. Um, today's is actually it's, it's his second go at, um, at doing this. Yesterday was his first go, so <laughs> it, is, it is kind of hard. There is a little bit of pressure, um, but you will be able to see it unfolding. Uh, so if you, you have a You'll look at it. You'll be fine. Here. There's not much to be said. <laughs> we'll get it done in one squiggle. <laughs> exactly. So it should be very simple. Everyone will be watching Dan. It's fine. <laughs> but um, yeah, so if, every, if every, everyone wants to come up and say hi to uh, Pradeep afterwards, please feel free to. I was also going to say that we have a few of our regular Think Visual uh, meetups, meetup comers here tonight, and they're going to be scribing the crowd as, crowd as well. So if you, you can peek over their shoulder and see them scribing. Um, and this is open to anyone who would like to try their hand uh, at this. So feel free to come up and chat to us or Pradeep after this. And we'll set you up with another with an upcoming um, Sydney Design Thinking event. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Alan and Yana. Um, so yeah, this has been an awesome little collaboration that we started a few weeks, a few months ago now as a nice, safe environment for some of the shapeshifters and the visual design crew, uh, visual storytellers to practice with a live audience. So lots of cheering, want the cheer squad on. And actually, before, before I do that, you're back. 
Kate, come and tell us a tale. What does ThoughtWorks do? Works. Uh, we do custom software, which involves a lot of design, as you could imagine. Um, ThoughtWorks is kind of famous for perfecting agile ways of working, and uh, agile works so beautifully with design. You know, iterative design. You're constantly improving. You're learning from your customers. So, um, yeah, ThoughtWorks. We're in um, loads of countries. I've lost count. <laughs> Uh, loads of officers been around for 30 years. That's us. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. And a huge thanks to ThoughtWorks for hosting us again. Um, Susan's going to talk about LeapFrog Studios in a moment. And I even said the right name, I think. <laughs> Winning. Um, and I'm Ben. I never introduced myself, so I'll do that very briefly. I'm from Dynamic 4. We're a leadership design and innovation business and a social enterprise in B Corp. And it's how do we use those things to help create the conditions for happier communities. Uh, any of that sounds interesting, come and have a yarn. So, not that. Sydney T first, because we've got three meetups here tonight, so we'll get to all of us. Um, we've got Kate, who's part of the team, Lucas, Kylie. Awesome. So, Sydney T, our normal rhythm's the second Thursday of the month, and we do fun stuff like this. <laughs> And hopefully everyone knows that it's Are You OK Day. So a good time to check out, check in on some friends. And Lucas is going to have a couple of couple things to say about that. Thanks, man. I'm OK. I hope so, at least. Anyways. Put your hand up if you've got that voice inside your head that keeps chattering. <laughs> and let's say you just said to yourself, I don't have a voice inside my head. That's the voice I'm talking about. <laughs> now, sometimes that voice is really helpful for us. Sometimes we can use it to G ourselves up and say, oh, I can do this, I can do this. And sometimes we sit there and go, I can do it, no, I can't. I can do it, no, I can't. You need to have more than one voice, as someone alluded to. If you were to put that voice into a person and sit next to you, how many of you would look at that person next to you and ask for that person for advice? Personally, I wouldn't, because sometimes <laughs> I, you talk yourself out of things too many times, you lose focus. You, so when, you, when you're in a really dark place, and I sort of talk about this from experience, I've been in places where I've had to go through some tough things, and it really was people around me that really helped me through that. And that's really what drove me to, to believe a lot in the sense of community and people helping and supporting people, like other people who need it. So when I say I really want to implore people to ask people around them, are you okay? Please go do that because it helped me when I needed it. So please try and talk to your neighbours, talk to the people around you and just have a chat and be there to listen and, and just hear what they've got to say and just be there for them. You don't have to do anything, you don't have to solve anything, sometimes it's just just listening because if they talk to somebody else, often it means they're not talking to that person inside their head. So just a nice little circuit breaker. So are you okay? Please have a chat to your neighbour and have a great evening. Thanks Mike. Great reminder and obviously we've got a day of the year for it, but it's something that we need to do all year round. But it's a great reminder now and thanks for sharing Lucas. Um, Sydney T, a huge thanks to our members. Um, so, thank you. <laughs> As at last night, we're at uh, just over 9,500, so we're on the, that final countdown to 10K. We're almost there. So, bring your friends. If you ended up here for some other reason than Sydney T, Make sure you join Sydney T as well. There's <laughs> <laughs> an affiliate link in here somewhere, but um, but yeah, it's uh, awesome. The reason we do this is for the community and being part of the community, so it's with and for. And uh, obviously, we love it because we've been doing it for over nine years, and we keep doing it. So it's, thank you, and it's all for you. Now Woo! over to K Dove and Sylvia. Are you going to come and support Sylvia? She's sorry. 
<laughs> Hi everyone. Uh, for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Kevin. Sylvia, are you coming up? Please come up. Please, 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 please. Uh, I'm part of uh, CCX Sydney. We're actually the Young Turk on, in, the, in the group. Like, we've only been going for four years, so, uh, like, we're the young'uns. Yeah, I think we're like 3,000 and something, you know, something like that. Not we're into the numbers, are we, Ben? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, and uh, Lydia sends her apologies. She's stuck in the Blue Mountains, unfortunately. And Ash from uh, Atlassian, our wonderful, amazing sponsor, has been with us for four years, so we can't say if anyone's from Atlassian. Anyone from Atlassian tonight? Cool. Can't see anyone. Uh... Now, Sarah's normally here, but she's not here at the moment. Uh, and most people, some people in here have worked for Atlassian, so you know who I'm talking about. Um, yeah, so we are very, very lucky in our next meetup. Uh, we're very lucky to be part of this, by the way, sorry. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and we, we, we intentionally didn't have a September edition because we're so close to Ben's meetup anyway. So he's up, he's up, he's up, he's up, he's up, he's up, he's Sorry, so he's up, he's up, sorry. They're on a Thursday, we're on a Tuesday of the same week, it's not good planning, is it? Um, but we're really lucky that in our next meetup we're going to have an amazing friend of ours, Ollie. So Oliver Wendlich. Um He's um, going to be really going into a beautiful deep dive into spatial design and augmented realities. And I can guarantee you, if you're into Apple Vision Pro, you're in for a treat, right? So um, yeah, we're doing that on what day is that? Second Tuesday, yeah. October. April, October. <laughs> I'm struggling here. <laughs> Look behind you. I'm a, I'm a customer <laughs> land to public speaking. It must be a youth. I'm a customer land to public speaking. You should have done that. Uh, uh, like, we'd love to see you there. And um, we've got a November event, which we'll talk about later. Um, and it's right behind, you know, City Design Thinking as well. So um, we're doing another one. Yeah, we are. Uh, are we are we doing another mega meetup? <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. The is but on. it's so bad, isn't it? Yeah. So there is another like design connection coming up. Is that right, Susan? Yeah. yeah. Two more. Okay. Two, right. Yeah. Is it time for Adam? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thanks, CCX. Woo! Pass off. Okay, okay, so follow that, Adam. <laughs> So, we've also I got Adam from may, may EUX. I, may I just please interject briefly? <laughs> oh, this is really starting to turn into a Monty Python. So. <laughs> and our next association... <laughs> where's, where's the dead parrot? I mean, the living parrot. Oh my God. <laughs> Adam <laughs> from EUX. So, what's the wind speed velocity? No, okay, right. So, okay, slide um, off. Okay, slide off. Yeah, this is um, Okay, um, so just briefly, EUX Sid, we've got our next meetup next week on the 19th. Woo! Uh, Woo! I really wasn't prepared for that, Kevin. Thank you. Um, and we've got Rebecca Murphy, who's the, um, she is currently the product design lead at CMC Markets. Going to give a really cool talk just uh, about her experience there, so definitely recommend coming along if you can. Uh, we've also got an Apple Vision Pro, so if you want to play with it before we meet up, <laughs> you're more than welcome to come in and play with it. I've only found Fruit Ninja on it so far, but everybody else can have a bit of a play. Um, and just on the Are You OK Day, a lot of people have been asking me if I'm OK recently. I'm not really, but the fact that people have been asking me has been really good. So I think it's a really important thing to, to do. And as you said, Ben, it should be every day, not just today. But anyway, thank you. So, one that's not technically part of Design Connection or the Mega Meetup, but a meetup that a bunch of you hopefully will be interested in. In a couple of weeks' time, who uses Framer? Any Framer users? A couple of people that are almost confessing? Yep, good. <laughs> so the official Framer Sydney meetup is going to be happening with that QR code on the 25th. Wednesday the 25th, it'll be across the road at Fishburners. And so if you're into Framer, does everyone know what Framer is as a tool? Sorry, is it Framer or Farmer? <laughs> Hopefully, I'm reading it right. <laughs> Framer wants a Framer. Um, so it is a prototyping, no-code, low-code digital tool. It was around back in the old school days. I haven't actually used it probably for approaching 10 years. Um, but it used to be one of the key prototyping plugins 
for Sketch back in the day as a uh, prototyping tool before Figma sort of accelerated. So if you're into that side, definitely the UX UI, low code, no code practitioners in the group, worth checking out. And it, it's developed awesomely over the years as well, I believe. I haven't actually used it for a while. So in terms of SIDDTs coming up, a quick run sheet going through until February. So I'll work backwards because we're going to kick off 2025 with Alan and Deanna doing a visual, what are we calling it? Workshop. Visual the, the, learning the, workshop. A visual learn. there we go. We've got a visual learning workshop. So it'll be more of a workshop format to, co to kick off 2025. And um, that will be here at this stage. Yep, good. Phew. So, <laughs> um, so that will be an awesome way to start the year. Um, next month, on the 10th of October, um, we're talking about inclusive design, and that one's going to be hosted at Atlassian. Um, who's going to South by Southwest Sydney? Any hands? One hand. So if you haven't got your ticket yet, I've got a promo code for 10% off, so hit me up for that. I can't put it in the public domain, but I can do it on private channels. So let me know about that. The good news is, I've managed to negotiate a venue where our Sid DT meetup at South By will actually be in the public space. We don't need a pass to come to now. So originally you've got a new pass. So it's on a Monday, Arvo. So sneak out of work, 3.15, middle of Tumbleland Park. There's a space to get drinks nearby and it'll just be a casual yarn. We're not gonna do any content or anything. I think I heard a volunteer to be on stage playing. Is that what I heard, Ian? <laughs> Stand up. <laughs> that sounds like a really bad joy. Um, or trio, because it was plural there. Um, and then Crothers. Hooray, Ben. There he is. Ben's going to be doing, with Rach Zhang, the annual tradition that we have at SIDDT. We're going to do this one as a design connection mega meetup as well. Our annual State of the Design Nation chat. So Ben and Rach, both judges on this year and many previous years, or Ben has been, uh, good design awards. And so it's uh, highlights from this year's, key observations, trends, patterns, anything else you want to add to that? Oh, sparkling, insightful chat. Sparkling, insightful <laughs> chat. Did chat yeah, GPT write that for you? <laughs> <laughs> it's always a crowd favourite, always plenty of insight and gold in that. So. Um, Macquarie Bank, Macquarie Group, is going to be hosting that one in their brand new space at um, Elizabeth Street and they're expecting about 100 internal people and we've got a cap of 300. So there's going to be plenty of space, it'll be a free one, so come along to that one because Ben and Rachel are speaking, but then it'll be an awesome spot in their new space. What have you been to new space, Jake? I have. Yeah, it's yeah. nice. Say so again? What date is that? It's Wednesday the 6th of November, so it's a off cycle one. One, it's probably the first one we've ever done on a Wednesday, and it's the first <laughs> Wednesday of the month. <laughs> um, and then we're going to wrap up the year as another Design Connection mega meetup uh, that Atlassian's hosting, and that one will be some very, very light content, just enough to reflect and celebrate all the goodness that 24 has been, but mostly it's uh, our annual end of year get together. So that's uh, some stuff coming up. To get in on the action for next month, hit that QR code. Um, we've got Manisha, Shaheen, and Marianne talking about inclusive design. It's going to be awesome. So, That's come to Atlassian, is it? That'll be Atlassian, at the new one on George, 363 George, I think it is, <coughs> opposite the Fullerton. 363 in the museum. Yeah. All right, now I'm going to hand over to Susan. What is LeapFrog Studios, oh. and who is Dan? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Thanks, Susan. Thank you. All right. So you may have noticed a few frogs lying around. Everybody have a frog? If you haven't gotten a frog, grab some. They tasted horrible. Oh, that's the, oh, that was the problem. You know, I ordered, I ordered the pizzas. I ordered the booze. And a chocolate covered frog. Oh, those were chocolate covered. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, most of you know me from all kinds of things, um, just because I've been organizing this and I haven't had a chance to share a little bit about this, I just wanted to um, let you know about another initiative that um, 
I'm very much involved with because I'm running it, because I started it. Um, it's this idea of LeapFrog Studio. And what LeapFrog Studio is all about is about bridging the problem with the fact that we have a lot of social enterprises that need UX services but can't afford our services. We also have a lot of people, particularly who are moving into the field in particular, right? And again, I was personally responsible for a lot of these people moving into the field. Um, and um, finding it kind of hard to get work in this culture. There's a segue, culture, environment, all of these things. Anyway, what LeapFrog Studio does is project apps. So what we do is we provide low bono consulting to social enterprises. So it is a, it's a win-win for um, emerging designers as well as the um, social enterprises. So that's what we do. We are we have a number of um, frogs in the audience. Uh, we have, in fact, the person who made most of these frogs, my frog, if you grab one of the frogs that doesn't jump, that was one of mine. <laughs> um, if you grab one of the frogs that does jump, that was probably, it comes from Berta, who's somewhere here, there she is. Uh, Grab a frog. Anyway, it's just, if you know of any social enterprises, I'd be keen to talk to you. If you know of any emerging designers who'd like to come and join our merry uh, band of frogs, come and talk to us as well. So that's what LeapFrog Studio is all about. That's what I've been doing um, recently. The other thing I've been doing recently, and the thing that really brings me here tonight, apart from the fact that I'd be here anyway, because I've come to all these things, um, is to introduce the guy who's carrying all kinds of weird stuff in his arms right now. Um, I have no idea why he's doing that. Um, but I wanted to introduce you to someone who I have known since probably my first, well definitely 20, too many years ago, when I first landed in Australia. Um, and I was doing work at this organization called um, Telecom, Telecom Australia. Telecom. It was before Telstra. For those of you who remember that it wasn't called Telstra forever. Sort of. Sort of, yeah. And um, so I've worked with Dan oh, since, um, since back then when we were both working in the usability space. And uh, Dan has had um, an illustrious career um, in that space doing fabulous things both here in Australia and for the past 25 years in Hong Kong. Um, he's been doing great things. If you ever had the opportunity to hear about or even have the pleasure of going to U.S. Um, Hong Kong, it's been a, it was a great uh, run for what, a decade. And um, what he and his wife Jo have been doing for the past ten years is something that's near and dear to my heart. It's something that I've had the pleasure of being involved with, um, and it's this whole idea of how can we do things a little bit more meaningfully. And so he's going to be talking tonight about um, sort of his journey on making meaningful work and now how that is morphed into thinking about the cultures that we build in our organization. And so I'm going to turn it over to uh, Dano and I'm going to let him share some stories and then we're going to have some conversation. And I don't know what he's doing with that uniform. We'll have to find out. Looks good on you, James. Interactive thing. Hi, darling. Hey. Hey, how are you? Um, I'd like to I'd like to introduce you introduce you to some friends. You ready? I'm going around one more time. You ready? Woo! Everybody, are you ready, Joe? Everybody, could you just say, everybody, just say one big get stuffed? <laughs> one, two, three. Get, get stuffed, <laughs> Joe. Okay, now, there you go, darling. Now we're officially in Australia. Are you well? 
Say again. You forgot to put a rubbish out. Yeah, it's, of course it's a surprise. All right, that's enough. I'll chat to you later. <laughs> Get stuff. <laughs> um, so I actually thought, I just thought of bringing her in then because um, uh, she's been a big part of this. Made many for work. That's the, that's the lady on the front cover of the book, Jo Wong. And, um, yeah, she's been a big part of the last 25 years. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. That's <laughs> oh, better. Oh, you ready? Take a moment and think about, just on your own, no discussion, just take a moment to think about, um, I'm, I'm not looking for an academic definition of culture, but just take it, I like the swivel, this is good. Take a moment just to think about what is, what does culture, not like culture by country or culture by city or culture by family or culture by nationality, what, what does culture, organisational culture, mean to you? Go. Maybe you can talk to someone about it next to you or just have a think. Okay? And while, while you're thinking about that, Jake is going to sing a solo from Barry Manilow's album. Yeah, just have a... You can chat to people about it. What, what, is, what is culture? What is culture? Can't think about talk to that voice in the head. Yeah, talk to that voice in the head. The multiple voices. One more minute. Okay, time. Time. Okay, let's do this check, check show style. Anybody, what does culture mean to you? Put your hand up, please. Great. Really good. Oh, yeah. Very, come over, come up the front. Yeah, what's your name? <coughs> Ian, everybody, I'd like, to, I'd like everyone to meet. This is Dave Letterman. Hey! Come on up, Dave. Ian. Ian, come over here. I didn't get a chance, right? Ian, <laughs> what, what, does, what, is, what is the definition of culture? What does culture mean to you? Uh, thank you. Uh, workplace culture, to me, mm -hmm. it's the way we do things around here. Particularly when nobody's looking. <laughs> That's good. Anybody else? What does culture mean? I saw other hands. Yes. What does culture mean to you? For me, it's a shared sense of meaning. So think about meaning we make as individuals. For me, it's a collective meaning that we all share somehow. Sometimes we do it knowingly, intentionally, and sometimes we do it unintentionally. So think about blame culture where, oh, I protect myself, I'm gonna start blaming somebody else. 
Um, tell, so tell, tell us a little bit more. Just by the way, this is a tip when you get invited to present, you get other people. <laughs> <laughs> you just walk off and eat the pizza. Yeah. <laughs> tell us tell us a little bit about the tell it's us a little bit more stuff. about the unintentional part. That's interesting. I always use the example of um, and it's a fake science experiment that I don't think ever happened, but it's the, the monkey that had to climb the ladder and they hose down the monkey and when they try to get the banana, there's a banana on the top of the ladder or something like that. And then they take the monkeys out one, and they introduce new monkeys. And over time, the only monkeys in the room were never there when the first um, hosing down ever happened. So eventually they start learning these practices to pull the other monkeys down. Now, what I want to do is, because I, I don't want to get hosed by the fire hose or whatever it is. And it's these things that you build up over time that you don't know why they exist. And they just become behaviours and you don't really understand why. And that's sort of... The implicit nature, the implicit the intrinsic or implicit nature, yeah, which is the un, that's the unknown. Like we've done this because there might have been some leader that behaved in a certain way, and it's just been ingrained in the way we work, or there might be something that's triggered a, a way of way of working, and we, we interact this way, uh, which is why it's hard for me, I think, to design culture intentionally. It's hard because you've got to un, undo what's been done before, and you don't know how the hell it got there. Everyone, <laughs> very much. That was excellent. Good philosophical. One, we'll do one more. Yes. The microphone is yours. Hey, hi everyone. Um, I work at CBA. I've been there six months, and I was in an Are You Okay session this morning uh, with a guy who would call himself a lifer. You know, he's been at CBA twenty-five years plus. And I'd say that our culture is somewhere where somebody like me, who's been there for six months, can talk to someone there who's been for 20, uh, 25 years and have an instant rapport. So I kind of think that that really says a lot about the culture at CBA. So rapport. Rapport and, you know, kind of inclusion, like, uh, and all of the above. <laughs> Thanks, mate. No worries, mate. <laughs> All right, so you might be thinking to yourself, or maybe you're not, what is uh, Joe, who you've just, you've just met, and Dan's definition of culture? So this actually comes from my, my beautiful wife, Josephine. Joe defines culture as, pens ready? Yeah. Okay. Because she's very smart. Joe defines culture as the interactions and relationships and conduct in moments that matter. I'll repeat it. It's a very simple definition, but it's quite delightful. The interactions and relationships and conduct between people in moments that matter. And we thought long and hard about that definition, but that's our definition. So. Why that definition? It's just a definition, right? It's been really interesting to watch people come in to the room tonight. And I'm looking around the room, I see a lot of lovely, familiar faces. Uh, we've just met for the first time in person, but we've had plenty of Zoom calls. Susan I've known for a long time, Jake I've known for a long time, Julie I've known for a long time. The thing about culture is the minute one person work, walks into this room, it's, a, it's already a culture of one. Whether, whether it's acknowledged or not, whether it's explicit in terms of a tree where the, the branches of culture around what we call in Make Many for Work, character, leadership and culture above the soil, that's explicit, that's visible, that can be seen, or whether it's more interestingly implicit and non-visible, culture exists. And let's just just entertain me and just accept, let's just accept that as a hypothesis. The minute a couple more people enter the room, well now you've got more than a culture of one. You've got a culture of two or three, and then more people come into the room. Some people don't talk to anyone, some people grab a drink, relax in the corner, some people just hoe into the pizza. 
Some people meet up with other people and have conversations. And what's interesting about this group, and it's as much as I made a joke before about the introductions, what's quite stunning about this group, and it's very rare, is that you've got multiple groups, and, and, and credit to the community leaders who have brought this together, it's very, very rare. And so what you have is, you have a multiple uh, communities of practice coming together, and the intersections between those communities become very interesting in the interactions and relationships and conduct between people in moments that matter. And this, this collectively, if we look at culture across the me, us and the we, or we could say the individual, the team, the organisation, this, this is an intersecting community of practice of cultures. Now some might walk into this culture, we could invite someone in and walk in, might not be the right fit for them. Something's going on implicitly or explicitly. And there's other people that would walk in to hear and just feel immediately at home, which is interesting. But the thing about culture, it's always there, it's always there, but our hypothesis is, and hence culture ops, for lack of a better naming of it, unless you make it explicit to people, explicit and sharp and well understood through what we call conduct, measured by Sparkle, S-P-A-R-K-L-E, as a baseline measure, so naturally you're thinking, what is Sparkle? Supportive, proactive, adaptable, responsible, kind, listening, engaged. Just entertain me with that as a starting baseline. Equal to people interacting and relating in moments that matter, that looks healthy, unless that is made explicit, culture is abstract and basically we're just throwing darts at a wall every day randomly with an assumption that culture will be understood. Now, let's take it a little bit further. If culture, part of culture, an organisational culture, is represented by words, so what are those words? Usual suspects. A vision. Ooh, we have a vision. A mission. A mission or a vision. Values. Oh, there's another good one. Right? Jake, you mentioned a few others. Values. What? No. <laughs> no, Dick, that's right. I'm, I'm forgetting. Be careful. Yeah, yeah. Right? Words. But how do we turn the words into action? And we call that in culture ops, we call that the gap. And I would posit that for a lot of you in your various workplaces, that gap exists now. Now, there's a the, the lens of question, do, do we wish to take responsibility to reduce that gap and make the culture less abstract and more clear and well understood, not through just words, but through action. It's a very important part of this framework. Yeah, the values say we're polite, the values say we're thankful, but in our conduct, are we? Is that well understood? Is that well practised? Is that actually seen in the day-to-day -day embodiment of the conduct equal to the culture? That's the gap. Any questions? Any thoughts? Yes? Could you please repeat uh, Sparkle? Sure. Thank you. Sparkle, S-P-A-R-K-L-E, which is on the front cover of this book. <laughs> I'll get that back from you later. <laughs> Supportive, proactive, adaptable, responsible, kind, listening, and engaged. And you know what? There's generous amounts of it in this room because of the nature of people. 
that come to these types of community events. It's very, it's omnipresent in design communities, UX communities, or whatever we decide to call it tomorrow, right? But think of Sparkle, thank you for asking, I'm repeating, think of Sparkle as a baseline, equal to what a healthy culture should look like, but I'm not necessarily saying that's, it's a, it's a baseline, but that would need to be customised according to the various, because there's lots of different organisations in this room, so that would be need to be personalised and customised. Okay. Third point. What does it feel like, what does it feel like when you are in a culture where you feel you're not aligned to that culture? You feel out of place, you feel it's disconnected. You're feeling some sort of emotion equal to that lack of alignment. Take a minute or two so I can grab a water and just tell me, just think about what, what does that miss, we'll start with misalignment that can lead to sleepwalking. What does that feel like? Everyone good? Yes. yes. Go. feels misaligned, which basically means culture is made up of people, time and place. Culture is the interactions, relationships and conduct between people in moments that matter. So implicitly and or explicitly, what does it feel like when we don't feel aligned? Anybody? Yes? So like you do your part, I do my part, yes. and we made up again with problem that occurs to me. So that's what So is that, is that about, so the word parts, Ah. So we just came back to our spots one yes. and do your own stuff. And yes. so we made up again when the problem happens. Yes, which 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 can work in a culture if the if that relationship is not necessarily needed to make the whole work. Sometimes that can work. Uh, sometimes it, it doesn't work. So that's a good one. Jake. It feels like you've got a stone in your shoe. Yeah. So <laughs> that it feels like you've got a stone in your shoe. Yes. Right, so you can kind of still walk around, you can do things, but this is something that's just niggling at you the whole time, and it's uncomfortable, and it's not very nice. It's like having Mick Jagger in your shoe, mate. <laughs> stone. There was someone at the back. Yes? I'll give you, I'll give you the mic. Yeah. People don't mind if you clap. (laughs) 
One more? It just has to be on the other side. Is there one more here? No? Oh, for God's sake. Honestly. <laughs> it's okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, I would say it feels disingenuous and inauthentic. Like you're almost lying to yourself that you want to be there. Yes. Yes. Because of misalignment, yeah. Nice one. One more? Down the back. Okay, let's go for let's go for two more. This is interesting. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, for me, misalignment in uh, culture could also be a strong indication of a very uh, exclusive exclusionary culture, um, and it, especially if it holds a sense of expectations for an individual to comply to. And if you're feeling like that, there's that false expectation. You sort of have to question if it is if it's worth pursuing such a relationship or such a culture if they hold such exclusionary views in a, in a way. So it's rather because I feel like when it comes to misalignment, people think of it as an individualistic problem that you need to overcome, but sometimes it's an indicator of a more systemic problem. Paradoxically conflicting. You want to be there and you don't want to be there at the same time. Yeah. That would be a great Stanley Kubrick film. <laughs> <laughs> Paradoxically conflicting. Have you seen that film recently? It's great. Right. He's not going to make it. He's not. He's, I don't think no, he can. It's like those chocolate frogs. <laughs> <laughs> more interesting. Um, in my opinion, it's a killer of creativity and productivity. No, yeah. you need to clap Jake. No, no. Jake didn't get a clap. Jake didn't get a clap. Okay, so here's the thing about the question. We know what it feels like when the culture is not aligned. So here's the second question. What do you do about it? It depends, right, on many, many factors. It could depend on the team you're in. It could depend on the boss that you're working for or with. It could depend on the pre-existing culture when you came in. It could depend on the recruitment process or what you felt or does it feel aligned to the interview. I mean, there's so many factors. But more often than not in our research, I just like to say our research to sound impressive, but what we've, what we've observed in what, we've studied, in what we've read and what we've studied to inform culture ops, starting with Make Meaningful Work and now culture ops, is more often than not, and it's a, it's, a, it's a general observation, more often than not people will say, I can't do anything about it, it's got nothing to do with me, it's the CEO's problem, it's the senior leadership's problem, it's people operations, it's, it's the culture team, yeah, it's got nothing to do with me. I have my job function, I have my role, I don't have any remit or responsibility equal to culture. So part of the, the hypothesis says that actually what we're trying to do with culture ops is to create a greater distribution amongst more people to say everybody can do something equal to culture. Lens the next question, how do we do that practically? Now I need to call Joe again. Because she's the practical one. How do we do that practically? The way that we do that, do that, without getting too deep into methodology or tools, is we do that by simply practicing, and I'll say this slowly, so you can all write this down, how we can individually, the me, and or the we, the us, the, the team, or the we, organisationally, how can we insert meaning into moments that matter? I'll repeat it, because that's the, that's, the, that's the core of culture ops. That's the heart of it. it. Took us a long time to come up with that, but it's simply how can we, how can the individual, the team, and the organisation insert meaning into moments that matter? Okay, so what's meaning? It's not like meaning, oh, meaning, meaning, I mean, 
That's interesting, we can have conversations about that. It's meaning equal to the practicality of how I'm conducting myself in the moment that matters, that is explicit by nature. Right? And what is the conduct? Well, we've already got the beginnings of the conduct, and the conduct is the, is the measure of sparkle. Because, because each of those represent the beginnings of conduct. How can I be more supportive? How can I be more proactive? And da -da 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 -da. Okay. So some of you might be thinking, hmm. What are moments that matter? Well, here's the interesting thing, and I, I would be 110% confident about this, about everyone in the room. You'll all have slightly different moments that matter equal to your workplaces. But you know what? That's what makes it awesome. Because, hey, here's the CEO, just as an example. Hey, we should be more like Apple. Apple's Apple. Why would we want to be Apple? And we have no idea how Apple created their culture. We have no idea what moments that matter matter to Apple. We don't have any real idea on how they conduct themselves. We don't even have any idea how they measure that. Why would we want to be Apple? We should be more like Google. We should be more like Amazon, God forbid. <laughs> but the point, the, point, the point is, in culture ops, what we've said is we start effectively with a blank canvas for everyone. And when we go in and we get to understand people, and it starts with an individual or a team or an organisation, whether it's a functional team, because a design team might have its own culture and there might be subcultures within that culture and some subcultures within that culture, but then there'll be, there'll be a culture within the engineering and a culture in marketing and a culture in finance, a culture in legal, a culture with the C-suite. All of that is very interesting, but it's all very abstract until we can define both A, the meaning equal to the conduct, and B, the moments that matter that represent that conduct. So you can see, as much as I'm clowning around with soft toys and having fun, I am intentional. I'm not saying I've orchestrated this or scripted everything in my head prior to meeting you all, but I'm constantly practicing the notion of being Intentionally, head down, what do you need to do? You have to get the audience to warm to you. How are you going to do that equal to your conduct? What are the moments that matter equal to this presentation? What does that look and feel like? I mean, I'm not saying I've mapped it all out, but it has intention. So we can't, we can't hope to have a healthy culture by simply hoping we can have a healthy culture without the intention. Okay. So... What I would like you to do, or, and, or, what Susan, Julie, Jules, and Jake, come on, come on up, come on up, everybody. Jules, Jake, this is, yes, this is your gravity. I'm telling you, it's the, it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the easiest hack in the world. You get invited to present. Make it 90% about other people. And everyone goes, that was a great talk. That was incredible. He was so smart. Okay. Uh, Susan, Jules, Julie and Jake. Susan and myself are the only ones that don't have a name that begins with J. Um, they're going to share with you an example from their perspective of a moment that matters. So Susan doesn't fall off her chair. Before we do that, what we'd like you to do first is we'd like you to think about a moment that matters to you. Now, it can come from life, family, life, friends, but if you don't mind, my preference, again, entertain me, my preference would be if you can think about it in a work context, now, it could be a current work context, could have been today. It could be from a month ago, it could be from a job you had three years ago. But I really want you to think carefully about a moment that matters, that has the attributes of something that's very meaningful and important to you, where you say to yourself, geez, if I would just insert some 
conduct here equal to some sort of measurable outcome by Sparkle, if I was more intentional, I might be able to work towards influencing the culture. Right? So take a few minutes and just think about, just start with one, what is the moment that matters to you? And then by osmosis, you'll start to think of a story, you'll start to think of people in that moment that matters, you'll start to think, oh, that's interesting, the inside voice. You'll start to be thinking, oh, how does that relate to my values? Why did that upset me? What was the problem that I was facing? And so on. So it'll just come naturally. We good? Go. Okay, thank you very much. We have 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Yeah. Before we have to finish. No. 15 minutes. Okay, time. So, we're going to go with, with three responses from the audience. Three. Uh, moment that matters, an associated problem or opportunity in that moment that matters. Just keep it brief. It, it, what you should be feeling is you, you're probably saying, geez, I wish I had longer. That's a, that's a good feeling to have. But because we're on less time, just keep it brief. Anyone? Yes. Your name? Ahmed. Ahmed. Everybody <laughs> Ahmed? <laughs> I'm just a junior, but I, I work. I just finished my degree, but I was working for the university for the last couple of years. And every time we finish a cycle, everyone gets together and we sit down and we say, "Okay, what did we do well? What can we do better next time?" And and then, okay, that's great. And then we all go off, and then we have the same conversation again. And I think the moment that matters is not at the end of the start of the cycle when we're thinking about those things, but halfway through the project. Are we doing the things that we said we're going to do better? And it's that 
you know, because it's, it's not a conversation you have at the start and the end, it's the conversation you keep happening throughout the whole project. That's great. You do get a, you do get a free ball. I, re I personally really like that one because it speaks to the heart of culture ops, which is about, it's not just about the words, it's about are we taking responsibility for the action in our methodology we have something called um, a moments map yes another map but where people can see the moments that matter the aggregated and stronger moments that matter with a related conduct card that can be measured by sparkle and for people to for that to be real people actually have to commit to that moment that matters and there should be some, it works really well if there's then a connection to, you don't need many moments that matter, but there needs to be a very strong connection and or correlation or relationship to some point in a process. The issue often is we're hyper-focused on the process and the outputs and the deliverables and all the stuff that supports that. We're not as focused as we should be on the softer elements that are happening in and around the process. Not the hard skills, but the softer skills, the, the conduct in and around the process that actually shapes the culture in situ. So that's the idea of making it clear. Thank you. One, uh, two more. At the back. Uh, <laughs> it's always down the back. Hello. Hi, um, I'm a junior myself and I recently have in-house experience and I recently started my internship and as exciting as it is, like on a similar path, I always go to work to be my best, open to learning and given all this good feedback from my colleagues, it's very uplifting but I always ask at the end of the week, like what matters to me is like what can I do better to improve, what can I do better to enhance my work because where can I see myself in five years? And like since I'm in a period of my life where I'm slowly getting my foot in the door with full-time work, contract work, it gets me thinking like, what's next for me after this internship? What, what can I do? A thing I've learned is to stop and smell the roses and live in the moment. The key word there, key word, from my perspective, do. And it's nice to have, it's, it's, nice, it's funny how you describe yourself, I get it, you describe yourself as juniors, but yeah, I, I, I think if you're earlier in your career, to have people help shape, because we're talking about culture ops tonight, help shape those moments that matter, and then determine, in terms of the do, determine the strength of that action as connected to the moment that matters and then and then you'll feel more committed to it equal to shaping the culture hi is everyone well come and rock the boat of course you can yeah, you're coming up now. So, Come and rock the boat. That's the illusion of good. Wait, 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 I'll give you the microphone. Yeah, Before you rock the boat, have a seat. Can you give me back there? I'm giving you the microphone. Oh. Can we hear ourselves back there? All right. So, there's good corporate culture. And then there's kind of bullshit corporate culture. And this I'm going to ask you and everyone else. There is pretending to give a fuck. And especially with Are You Okay Day. I guarantee you, if you were to open your email box anywhere right now where you work with, you're going to have an Are You Okay Day from someone up there. And everyone's like, yeah, sweet, we said Are You Okay Day. No one killed himself, yeah, sweet. No one assaulted himself, yeah, sweet. Yeah, cool. But realistically, it can be a wank. So, like, what's the story? Like, where do we draw the line? And if I'm going to play devil's advocate, if I may, I suppose I am right now. <laughs> Having said that, like, where do we lie? Like, where do we lie? Like, we, right now we're talking the positive, but we need to be realistic at the same time. So, 
I don't know, my question is like, I'm not trying to like fuck with the presentation at all, I think it's very good. But at the same time, I'm saying like, the amount of like bullshit LinkedIn wank off posts, the amount of like this and the other, like there is a lot of wank around this, are you okay, are uh, this, that, the other. But it'll pass with this, next week it'll be LGBT, the week after it'll be purple flag, the next week after it'll be immigration, the next week after it'll be Shout out no man. Uh, It'll be Christmas by then. It'll be Christmas by then. And, and it goes through, it goes through. And it's people pretending to give a fuck. So, right, after we finish with this, how do people actually pretend to not give a fuck and do something actually about it? How do you quantify? I, I'll ask you a question, but how would you quantify your achievements or your ask tonight? What is success for you? What is success for everyone on this table? and how are we going to measure it? Thank you. Sorry, there's probably... I'm going to fill my wine on here. Yeah, fill your wine on. <laughs> I've only got one question for you. Go on. I'll say yeah. here. I'll say yeah, here. It's okay. It's all right. No, it's only one question, but it's yeah. out of like ten. The one question would be, how is that rocking the boat? So, no, no, don't answer it. <laughs> because I think everything you said is spot on. So, you and my wife need to meet. She'll love you. Yeah, no, no. It's a small no, statement. No, no, no. What I mean by that is... What I mean... <laughs> what I mean by that, and I'd like to hear from Susan, Jules, Julie and Jake. What I mean by that is, interestingly, everything that you've shared is fundamental to why we created Culture Ops. Everything that you said. Because I agree with you. I actually agree with you. So much of culture, the words, the lingo, the various days, so much of that is bullshit. It fucking is. Yeah, I know. I'm agreeing. No argument. So what we, what we said is we said, well, if a lot of it is words, fluff, uh, doesn't actually land anywhere, doesn't have meaning, that's precisely why we came up with Culture Ops. Because if you want to move something from words to action, like, oh, I'm so nice and I'm very thankful, and, but actually in our conduct, mm -hmm. in our conduct, it doesn't play out that way, it is bullshit. So I agree with everything that you've said. Big round of applause. <laughs> now the measure, the measure, the measurement part, to answer that briefly, yep. The measurement part is we thought long and hard about what could be a starting measure. The starting measure that we have is Sparkle. Now, it does sound a bit Disney, I think. Ooh, Sparkle. Ooh. But we've got, to, we've got to start with some sort of baseline equal to what a healthy conduct and culture looks like. But if we are going to measure it by Sparkle, supportive, proactive, adaptable, responsible, <laughs> kind, and listening. I always stumble on the R because it used to be respectful, but we changed it to responsible. Mm -hmm. And we made that change because if we are committed to the moment that matters, and it might just start, take, if, we were, if we were an organisation, just started with one moment. But the question is, are we committed to that one moment and the associated action and the associated sparkle, we've got the beginnings of a healthier culture. Less, right? Exactly, indeed. That's it. Very good, thank you. Thank you. Now. Can I, can I get back there, or you want me to? No, that's as you wish. <laughs> want to sit no, on my neck? I here. <laughs> <laughs> if you're gonna find me any questions, I'm definitely on the front panel. Something you, you got it. So, all good. So, I'm going to introduce these lovely people here. And they're going to share from their experience just a, 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 little, a little story, a little vignette, a little insight to moments that matter to them. And then I've, I've got a couple of other things real quick and then we'll close, Ben, I promise. Uh, Jake. Everyone, Jake. Everyone. So I started talking to Dan about, I don't know, a few months ago regarding this thing called... 
culture ops. I don't even think it was called culture ops at the time. But we were talking about, you know, what are the moments that matters? And it took me a, a while to get my head around, you know, what is he on about? Like, what? I don't understand this. But then once it clicked, it really clicked. Right? So um, there's, there's lots of moments in our day-to-day -day work that you can, you can clearly see you can make a major, major difference. Like the weekly check-ins with the team when you go around the table and you, you, you ask, you know, what's, how do you feel um, as a, as a, on a scale of one to 10? And give people the opportunity to talk about- Do something. How they are, right? But there's other sorts of um, moments that matter within, within design specifically that are absolutely critical to those moments that matter, such as, you know, design critique sessions where you've got stakeholders critiquing the work and perhaps they're telling you to change something that you, know, you felt very passionately about. But that is the moment that matters and the way that we conduct ourselves in those moments really matters as well. There's another moment, right, where perhaps um, the design team has all got together and we've debated the pros and cons of a certain approach and how um, scalable a particular solution might be and that is it best for this particular solution we all align on something and then you show a stakeholder and they say no I don't like it change it to this right and 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 how we react in these moments that's that that's that's what what actually builds the culture and the expectation of, of how how we collaborate as a team cross-functionally moving forward and I see People, including myself at times, get hugely frustrated in those moments and you get really defensive and then you try and blame someone else for, you know, the decisions that were made or whatever. And that's a sign of really toxic cultures. And so, um, working with Dan over the last few months, I've been able to take a, a, an approach which actually helps me identify these moments when they occur make them more explicit. And make them explicit. That's right. So because they're happening anyway. They are happening anyway. And now, when I see one of these moments, and they play out, and they're negative moments, I've either already thought about it, because it's happened before, and I've explicitly used this framework to go, ha ha, I have a little recipe here for how I should react in this situation. So there's a, there's a sense of being prepared. Prepared, yes. Or it's a new moment that I was totally unprepared for, but at least at the front of my brain I've gone, ah, I need to reflect on this afterwards and then work out how I respond next time this happens. And just that, that's just scratching the surface of, of, of what we're talking about with, with culture ops here. There's a lot more depth to that, but just that I found hugely, hugely beneficial in, in my day-to-day -day work. Thanks, John. I'm going to take this in a little bit different direction. Who here has worked at a company and experienced, whether you were impacted directly or not, a redundancy? Raise your hand. Okay. Now raise your hand if you think it was done well. No. <laughs> Very few, okay? And who would say that's a moment that matters? Yeah. Absolutely. So. Company A is planning a redundancy. They don't talk to their managers to find out who are the people that need to go or need to stay, so the wrong people are let go. Um, they've kept this in secret, so it's sprung upon people in the last minute, and everybody's scrambling, and the people who are left are thinking, wondering, what, am I gonna be next? What's gonna happen? And what does that do to culture, okay? Tears Company B, yeah, tears it apart. Company B is very open with their employees. They call a company meeting. They say, we're really struggling, and we want to be upfront with you and let you know that we can't make payroll in a certain number of months. So we're going to have to let some of you go, and we're going to do as well as we can for all of you and help you find new jobs. And guess what? The employees come back and say, we will take a reduction in our pay so that we can all stay. Yeah, how do people feel after that? So, 
same situation handled very differently in that moment that matters and that moment lasts in terms of how the employees feel about the company and the culture going forward. A point is this, and repeating briefly, culture already exists, whether it's intentional or unintentional. So wouldn't it feel just a little bit better if we could think about more explicitly our conduct in a moment that matters, that matters to us, and then to have some effect in that? I think that feels better than doing nothing or feeling defensive in it or feeling a victim in it. A lot of people feel a victim in it. And that doesn't necessarily scale very well. Jules. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, mine's a little bit different. Mine is a specific example. So I work in an organization where we have cross-functional teams. The teams work on their own part of the product. And then once a month, each team will kind of have a session with their exec sponsor to play back the work they've done in the past month. Actually, I think this one seems one of your examples. Um, I, my manager, you know, I, in one of my one-to-ones with him, he called me in, he said, I have an issue with one of your designers, they're, they're not going fast enough, their designs are only incrementally different and they're very slow to produce them. So I was like, oh, that's, that's not a good thing. I, I can see a few nods, I can see a few people that might have been the old one, why does design take so long? Why does discovery take so long? So I, I went back and uh, I had a chat with, with their designer to get her version, sorry, their version. And it turns out, yeah, it, obviously, as we all know, there's a lot more to the use of designs than simply whacking up a wireframe and figure. There were issues with data. There were issues with engineering about what is possible, what data we do have, what data we don't have, what data do we need. Etc. My manager, the exec, had only seen one facet of the work, and I kind of I, I had a session with him. I played back and I said, "Were you aware that all this work happens without you seeing it?" And he's like, "No, I wasn't." So then we began the, the process of the coaching and how to kind of frame his his inquiries in the form of questions, and also I didn't have to ask, "Why did you ask me?" The designer is very capable. Why could you not ask the designer themselves? Mm -hmm. And of course, I worked with the designer also to help them make the non-visual parts of their work more evident in how they talk to the exec. And we're kind of building a better culture now in that moment because now the exec feels that the door's been opened and he doesn't have to hide or, or, or shade his awkward mm -hmm. questions. He can challenge directly. And the designers quite accommodating. Like they, they appreciate the honesty, and they appreciate the, the opportunity to walk somebody who's not from their world through their process and explain all the issues that we have with our various backends and data systems and pipelines to help shed a bit of light also on the wider issue. So, started in a negative, the neg that, that moment was multiple months ago. And now the relationship between the exec and that, that particular squad is much better. Okay, and I'll be really quick. How many of you have applied for a job recently? How many of you, when you sent the application in, didn't hear anything back? <laughs> How many of you wish that they were responsive? Yeah, <laughs> that's all I want to say. I how, is there any pizza left? This is, very this is, this is relevant. Let me. Is it, are there any pizza left? A little bit. No. Oh, a little bit. A little bit. Okay. And the reason this is relevant is yesterday when I went to order the pizza, and yeah, put in a big order for the pizza. Obviously, I ordered just enough. And two minutes later, I actually got an email back from May from Italy saying, thank you, we received your order. <laughs> Didn't that make me feel great? How many of you had a drink tonight? I ordered the booze. <laughs> yeah, the booze didn't come on time. Oh, no, last night. 
you know you can't order this much booze after six o'clock because it's too much. Thanks. So I called this morning and I was on hold literally when I was playing with you. I was on hold for like a half an hour while they tried to figure out how to take my credit card. They said it was supposed to be here by two. It wasn't. Kate and I were downstairs fighting with trying to get the guy into the door because he couldn't. He would get a parking ticket if he tried to go out front. Anyway, long story short, they were totally not responsive. This is a huge problem that I think we need to work with, and I think it's something that, as individuals, we ought to be practicing. Because we all, we're all guilty of not necessarily responding when we should. And so, something for us to be thinking about. That's all I want to say. Stay there. <laughs> so, to conclude, Ben's like, no. <laughs> We've spoken a lot about conduct. We've spoken a lot about moments that matter. We've spoken a lot about sparkle. We've spoken a lot about the insert meaning into. We've spoken about words to action. We've spoken about the gap. We've spoken about all the way back to the beginning. What is culture? The interactions and relationships between people in moments that matter. So what we've done in the book is we've come up with a starter list of what we believe to be 10 key conduct outcomes. And I'm quite confident in this room a lot of these will resonate with you. But here's the thing. Here's the actual uh, key point. We happen to be with a, generically speaking, a design community of practice. But I can promise you if we had engineers here, marketing people, finance, content, I mean, all, if we had every single function in this room, they would look at exactly the same conduct outcomes and be able to recognise something in culture equal to moments that matter that are happening at work. So, here's the call to action. The call to action is, what's our role? What's our role in this? So I'm, I'm chatting quite a lot with Susan and Jules and Julie and Jake. <laughs> I'm getting mixed up with all the Jays and Joe, the lovely Joe, um, in the idea of coming up with a community of practice, but the counterintuitive thing perhaps for some of you, at least some of you in the room, is that it won't be design-led. I think design has a role to play in culture ops, but it's not design-centric, or nor is it design-led. However, on the flip side of that, on the flip side of that, there is an opportunity within this community of practice, like there would be an opportunity if I'm speaking to an engineering community of practice, or a product management community of practice, or project, uh, 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 project management, or, or, or product management, it doesn't matter within this community of practice, I think there's an opportunity for us to look at what could be the frameworks and the associated tools that we could develop together to have more impact on culture as it relates to character, leadership and culture. Not as a design-led thing, but as a practice that we could be influencing more and obviously in connection to if I may, culture ops. I think that's a great opportunity for us to mature together, right? to evolve, to keep learning, to not always frame, not necessarily always frame things as only through the perspective or lens of design. Because then we're, what we're doing is we're doing what all the other disciplines bloody well do. And they're, they're, they're doing it from their point of view. We have a great opportunity because of, the, because of who we are and how we operate in the world to be better facilitators of these types of cross and inter interdisciplinary discussions equal to what is a great culture. And therefore, and therefore, make work more meaningful. Make meaningful work, <laughs> make work more meaningful. Now, last exercise. Uh, we're gonna launch our book soon, and Joan jo will kill me if I don't do this. She'll literally kill me. Put up your hand, front cover of the book. I'm not saying it's gonna be this. Put up your hand if you like this design. Okay, put up your hand if you like this design. Mm. 
Put up your hand if you like. This design. All right, this appears to be... One more time. This one? Okay, it's the <laughs> Yes. The right hand design is like four corners. The right hand? This one? Oh, the show. Great show. Yeah, but you might have... Oh, okay, yeah, not, not in Asia. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. Sorry, can I ask you a question? Uh oh. Hang on a minute. We have to get out of here. We've got a call from a viewer from home. Yeah, go ahead. And like before you've shared it with everyone else. Yeah. And you've asked feedback. Yes. There's only some rationale around why you decided. Oh, there is. Look, golf shops one. And you see, like, obviously you're looking at pictures, but you're seeing something like in and out, right? Yes. Hands. Yeah. Just, a, just, I just, I was really, frankly, doing it for my wife. She asked me to do it, and and, and and it's a data point. It's not conclusive. It's not statistically significant. It's just interesting. Okay. Thank you. That's a good question. Last thing. We can talk more. I promise. We're going to the pub after. Okay. Yeah, we are. Last thing. Please connect with me. This is a very hard problem. Culture is a really hard problem to solve. We have attempted it through a methodology we've created for culture ops. Uh, we thought very deeply about it, uh, but we we need to improve it. We need to iterate on it. We need we need the design community. We need many different communities of practice to contribute to what culture ops would be. Um, these lovely folks here are going to help with that in terms of Sydney. Uh, we're talking to other people globally. Uh, it's a difficult problem. Uh, please help us. Please, con please connect uh, with us. And I hope as this ramps up, as we do shows, as we do roundtables, as we run our programs, and possibly even create a culture ops conference of some sort equal to this new community of practice, because this will be it for John and myself. Next 10 years, this is the final thing. I think we'll be working on it. I think, I think this is hard enough. Um, we'd love you, to get, love you to get involved. We'd really love you to get involved. And please, please continue to think about the moments that matter and continue to think about the problems in the moments that matter and the opportunities. And uh, let, let's see if this can help make a, make a real difference and impact equal to what we want culture to really, really like, what we, want, what we truly want a healthy culture to look and feel like uh, at work because we're not there yet. Thank you. Thank you. So, the good news is it's been very interactive and it can continue to be interactive because this is like part one. We go over the road to the Oki, the old men's pub on the corner over there. As I usually say, it's not good, but it's close. That's where we go. And so the Q&A can happen there. But I want to say, a huge thanks and get a massive round of applause again for Dan. Yeah. All right, Susan, Jake, Jim, Jules, and Sam. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. 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 you want to do it? Here we go. Here's the final product of the Life Guide as well. Thank you. Have you got the hand one here so people can? Follow. You need to sign your work. <laughs> Where's the handle? It, it'll be in the show notes. <laughs> That's the catch-all. So, thanks again for coming. That's been Sydney T number 103, Design Connection number 2. Plenty more coming. You've got next week for EUX. You've got the Sydney T 10th of October. We hit the Go forward button somewhere. <laughs> wow, there's more. That's an exit DT, but the more important thing is we're going to the pub now. So that's where the QA is happening. So thanks for everyone coming and thanks to Dan and the crew for speaking. It's been awesome. See you next month. <laughs>